welcome to another session of analog microelectronic circuits class uh, so uh, in today's class we'll start uh, one another application of op amp uh, that is an oscillator so far uh, under operational amplifiers we uh, looked at few uh, amplifier configurations we also saw uh, some positive feedback um, like comparators and a positive feedback circuit in the last class so one of you asked me one question uh, like so how schmidt trigger uh, is helpful in or the main uh, the main um, uh, reason why why we went for schmidt trigger is because of the stated reason uh, one of the inputs uh, the the noise at the input will be detected and uh, output will go for random fluctuations right that was a, a reason or one of the limitation for an open loop circuit what we stated so uh, how a schmidt trigger can overcome that is if you simply look at the Uh, the, the the transfer care of the Schmidt trigger, right? You can see that I was talking about a dead band condition or a hysteresis curve, where you can see that uh, whatever happens to the input signal below UTP and below LTP or within the range of uh, within that hysteresis portion of less than UTP and less than um, uh, LTP, um, whether your input changes or not, there is there will not be any change at the output, right? You can see that. the output transition will happen only when your input crosses utp so uh, the the point what we stated before as um, for the the smaller uh, the noise at the input uh, the the variations of the noise at the input terminals will not affect the circuit or this we can say that the circuit is stable in that respect and this will not respond to such small noise signals and will not cause any fluctuations in the output this is how a schmidt trigger uh, will help or will work basically with the help of this Now, yeah, by setting UTP and LTP condition, all right. So uh, since one of you asked that, I thought I'll just clarify it here. Now today we will start with oscillator. So um, um, by this time you 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 have done uh, oscillator circuits and you have experimented this uh, in lab. Now one based on open and one based on discrete circuit. So we here we will learn a set of circuits uh, where we can generate oscillations with the help of. Uh, op amp op amp as a main a crucial block right so uh, so far we uh, looked at amplifiers and uh, related uh, stuff right so now this is another uh, important application of op amp and the moment you hear oscillator what we uh, expect or what we look at an oscillator is a circuit which can generate a variety of output waveforms so this is circuit what we expect is this the circuit can generate uh, waveforms so uh, we when we use the term generate the meaning is uh, without any input uh, without uh, any input signal the oscillator is uh, will be able to generate so uh, whenever we mention as input signal we are not mentioning the supply voltage right supply is very much required for an op amp or for any device uh, to uh, to switch to turn on and to be in the proper operating region so the, when we say that Now, uh, oscillator is a circuit which can generate output waveform without any input signal. The meaning is, we will not provide a signal at the input as we provide in the case of an amplifier, uh, where a circuit can work on the input signal. It is not like that. The circuit will generate a signal by its own, right? Or uh, if you if you precisely give a definition for an oscillator, now we can uh, say that oscillator is a circuit. that can generate a repetitive waveform a waveform will be it will be keep on repeating the waveform will be keep on repeating and the waveform will be of some fixed amplitude and some fixed frequency and uh, the waveform will be generated without any external input signal that is how we can uh, define an oscillator circuit so uh, i'll just write it here oscillator is a circuit uh, that generates a uh, repetitive waveform so it will generate a repetitive waveform uh, what is the speciality of that waveform waveform um of a fixed amplitude that doesn't mean that we cannot vary the out, uh, amplitude we can vary the output amplitude of fixed amplitude and frequency Uh, we can, uh, in fact, we can vary frequency as well, but then uh, the circuit is called as a voltage uh, controlled oscillator. All right, so fixed amplitude and frequency um, without any external input signal. 
this is how uh, we define an oscillator all right <clears throat> now and if you if you look at uh, most of the electronic uh, um, gadgets or devices what we use uh, oscillators are used in radio uh, it, it is used in television mobile phones computers everywhere everywhere we and there are numerous applications for oscillators in all these circuits right so generally uh, we, what we expect from an oscillator is a repetitive waveform right now uh, we'll go to little more details about oscillator let us first look at the principle of oscillation or how we can say that or under what condition a circuit can actually generate these kind of waveforms uh, without any external input signal all right so uh, now let us look at the the principle of oscillation right uh, so <coughs> uh, oscillator can be uh, understood or oscillator can be uh, thought as a uh, circuit say so let let me uh, let us look at this um, so so far we learned uh, about amplifiers right so i'm just taking uh, an amplifier as a box as a black box this amplifier and say uh, the uh, the open loop gain of the amplifier is a this is the open loop gain of the amplifier uh, now um, so when you say open loop gain i have i have in applied any feedback to this amplifier but we know that for uh, applications for most of the applications we need to operate in the presence of a feedback what we call as uh, negative feedback and what we do is uh, for that uh, say if this is the output and there is an input signal coming in right so I'll call this as input signal over here now what happens we'll uh, take a part of this output signal we will feed back to a circuit we'll feed back to a circuit we call it as a feedback network you can relate this with uh, the topologies what we learned now in uh, say for example inverting amplifier we provide this we connect this to a feedback circuit and definitely a feedback circuit in most of the cases what we use is a purely resistive network but in oscillate yeah we'll see how in oscillators it works i'm not talking about oscillator principle i haven't started any oscillator principles yet i'm generally talking about an amplifier box amplifier block uh, an open loop amplifier so you can think about this as an op amp right now, in the case of this open, let me uh, look at this is an open loop amplifier. Say I am providing V, but now from output I am feeding back, or I am connecting another resistor, and I am connecting it back over here, and I am calling this as RF and R1. So what happens here is a portion of the output is fed back to the input terminal, right? So in this junction, the input signal and the feedback signal is getting connected, right? Now, how it is get connected, it depends on how I have given the feedback. So, in a similar way, when I feed it back over here, are you guys with me? Uh, are you guys understanding what I am trying to say? I am taking a signal from this portion. You can respond in the chat box. I will be looking at... Yeah. So, we will take a part of this and we will combine this or we will uh, combine this with the input signal. So this is the, uh, we can say this is a junction or the summing junction, whatever we do here, right? It's the same as uh, this point, what it happens. Now, uh, if I call this as a feedback signal, what I get here is uh, some, uh, some summing output, right? So let me call it as Vs or whatever it is, right? Now, uh, in the case of negative feedback, what we will ensure is, even though we call it a summing junction, we ensure that uh, it is in this form right your vs will be v in minus vf so because what we are applying is a negative feedback right but now let us move to the os so this is what generally happens in a closed loop amplifier circuit but now the only difference in the case of oscillator is instead of making the summing network here as uh, v in or uh, instead of creating this vs as v in minus vf what we generally do is we actually create uh, this we make this as exactly as a summing point where you can write yes your vs is equal to uh, v in plus vf 
right like this we can write now uh, so this i called as this is my output v out this is my vf right so uh, now let me uh, write what is v not v out what is v out from this block how, what what can we talk about v out v out is the amplifier block a times the input signal coming in here right so can i write v out as a into vs i can write v out as a into vs right one more thing i can write what about vf vf also i can write what is vf vf is equal to uh, if there is a feedback network say a feedback network is providing uh, some gain and i am calling it as some beta factor so i can write vf as beta into v out vf can be written as beta into v out all right so what i have done here is i have taken an amplifier box um, block then i connected a feedback network in general closed loop amplifier configuration uh, the summing network will be basically doing v in minus vf but instead of that i made this uh, summing as an exact summing point where the vs the input coming to the amplifier is a sum of v in and vf right and with that i have written these three relations now if i want to write a relation between the actual input so now this entire box entire uh, thing i'm considering this as a, a one entity where the v in is the input to this box and uh, v in is the input and uh, v out is the output of this right so uh, if i write a relation between v out and v in how can i write it how will i write a relation between v out and v in so if i write relation of v out by v in how can i write v out v out is a into vs what is vs a into mm, vs is let me write it like this uh, v out is a into vs where vs is v in plus vf right but what is vf now vf is beta into v out right this is what i have written the relation now if i work on this further i can write as v out is equal to a into v in plus a beta into v out or if i bring that towards left side i can write 1 minus a beta equals a into v in or if i write it as v out by v in I can write this as a by 1 minus a beta right so v out by v in is a by 1 minus a beta so what is this v out by v in is actually the ratio of output to input of this uh, this model what i have presented and that is given as a by 1 minus a beta right now the point here is now say if i okay let me let me move to the next page yeah so what i have written is v out by v in is equal to a by 1 minus a beta now <coughs> this is what in principle what, what we have discussed with the block diagram now we know that in, in an oscillator v in is zero or we are not applying any input signal right so look at this relation look at this relation between output and input uh, when v in is equal to 0 what is uh, what can be uh, what can we talk about output when your v in is equal to 0 uh, we can expect a non zero output v out can be no, uh, cannot be equal to 0 uh, under what condition under what condition i can say when without input output is possible you can say that if your denominator factor the denominator factor is this factor if this factor is equal to 1 what will happen if this factor is equal to 1 uh, a divided by 1 minus 1 a by 0 is basically an infinite quantity so even without input output can actually go to uh, output can get a value right this is mathematically i am telling so uh, if i redraw the structure what i have drawn before i have an amplifier here of gain a now this is output from here i am connecting to another a box we call it as feedback network this is 
Bf. Now I have no input signal. What I am doing is, uh, what I am doing is, Vf is connected back to this box, and this is V out, and this is Vf, right? So what you can see here is, um, I have just removed the input signal, but there is a possibility for output. Uh, there is a possibility to get a finite output, or there is a possibility to get an output if we satisfy the condition a beta is equal to one, right? So if you compare with the previous diagram, I have just did, I just removed the input signal and directly I'm feeding the output, the portion of output back to the input side. So the condition here is if a beta can be equal to one, there is a possibility for output to uh, get a value. Now uh, through this relation, we can see that output is actually going to infinity, right? Because when a beta equal to one, your output is basically infinity. So you will also see the same thing in a circuit because output will tend to grow as high as possible. But the, the limitation again here will be power, the power supply limit. So when there is a, uh, say for example, you have a 10 volt supply, uh, the output will be growing up to 10 volt because it can support only till 10 volt, right? So it will grow up to 10 volt and then it will be saturating there. So that is how uh, the circuit works. So this is how uh, generally we, uh, we, uh, we uh, talk about the principle of a uh, feedback system. This is called a positive feedback system. Now let us look a little detail about this A beta equal to one factor. Now when I say a beta equal to 1, if I express this in a polar form, I can write a beta equal to 1 angle 0, right. When a quantity is equal to 1, the magnitude is 1 and the phase is 0, right. So I can uh, say that the uh, 1 angle 0 or it is same as 360 degree because 0 and 360 are exactly the same. So this is what we are looking at, this uh, a beta, the condition for any uh, circuit to produce oscillations without any input signal is I should have a beta equal to one angle zero or one angle 360 degree and these are two requirements these two are two requirements for oscillations these are two requirements for oscillations one is the magnitude of this factor a beta magnitude of a beta and by the way, we call this A beta factor as loop gain. We call this as loop gain because when we go around in this uh, in this loop, the total gain of this loop is A into beta and we call this as loop gain. So magnitude of A beta, uh, the condition is must be at least one. The condition is A beta should be at least one and uh, the second condition is the total phase shift. So as we are moving around in a loop, the total phase shift in this loop, total phase shift of the loop gain term. So when we travel in this loop, uh, this loop gain term will have some phase. That phase must be equal to, must be equal to either 0 or 360 degree. That is how we ensure a positive feedback, right? So that is how we say oscillator works on the principle of positive feedback. The, the meaning is it is not like we have to always connect it back to the plus input terminal. That is not the meaning. The meaning is uh, in the loop, when you travel uh, from input um, output back to uh, in, the, in, the, in the complete loop, the total phase shift provided will be should be equal to zero or 360 degrees so that oscillations can grow, right? That is a condition. And, and these two conditions together we call it as Barkhausen criterion for oscillations. This is the condition uh, we call it as Barkhausen criteria for oscillations, right? So uh, I uh, uh, can I get some response in the chat window uh, whether you guys understood uh, what I was talking about. Now we'll go to the details of uh, this further. This is the basic principle. Now what we'll do, we'll look at uh, some of the uh, types. So oscillator types. So uh, there are different ways where we can classify oscillators. So we can classify oscillators depending on 
uh, the components what we use uh, we depend like again we classify depending on the range of frequency uh, what we get from that we also classify oscillators based on the waveform what it generates so there are different categories or different ways we can classify so i'll just list out uh, some of the criteria based on which what we how we classify oscillators one is based on the components what we use so based on components we generally classify oscillators as uh, rc oscillator where we use uh, resistor and capacitors uh, then we uh, call uh, lc oscillators where we use inductors and capacitors then uh, another one is we call it as crystal oscillators where we use a crystal as a uh, basic element right this is how based on components we uh, how we classify uh, in a, a similar way based on the frequency of oscillation so in what range we are getting the frequency from an oscillator circuit uh, there also we will classify uh, broadly we classify as two categories one is uh, audio frequency range uh, which which comes in uh, kilohertz lower kilohertz range and other category we call it as radio frequency range which comes under uh, greater than megahertz range there is no clear cut uh, um, definition or uh, range what we say okay uh, this is audio frequency in certain time in uh, depending on application also we will say that uh, some high megahertz range signals are also considered as uh, radio frequency signal so basically depending on what radio frequency application we are using the oscillator and then the another category is uh, depending on the waveform so what type of waveform it is getting generated so uh, whether it is a sine wave oscillator or it is a square wave oscillator or it is a triangular wave oscillator or, or it is a sawtooth waveform yeah, depending on that so it could be a sine wave oscillator uh, it could be a square wave or it could be a triangular or it could be a sawtooth different types of waveforms are required in uh, different circuits right so uh, so you have seen a function generator uh, as a um, as a, um, a component equipment in our um, AMC lab, right? So there, you can see that when you press on various um, this the type button, uh, you will see that that oscillator is able to generate sine waves, square waves, pulse, all these different types, right? So uh, generally, we use waveform generator ICs, and th those ICs will be able to generate all these different types, right? So. Here in our class, what we will do is we'll uh, study some of the RC oscillators. We uh, we definitely will look at crystal oscillators, and we'll see how what is the basic principle of all these circuits, how they can actually generate oscillations based on the Barkhausen criterion what we discussed. All right. So uh, in today's class, let's uh, look at uh, uh, one one we'll uh, ju we'll just start with one RC oscillator that is uh, the RC phase shift oscillator. Uh, we'll uh, if possible we'll uh, do complete RC phase shift oscillator today. Uh, in this oscillator is based on op-amp. It is not based on the uh, discrete transistor circuit. Uh, here we will discuss how we can have a RC phase shift oscillator using and open <coughs> right so uh, you are familiar with the open based circuits right so what we will do is uh, just look at the circuit diagram of an rc phase shift oscillator there is minus and plus input terminal of uh, this right so from the uh, principle what we learned what we do here is uh, we definitely we need a, a amplifier type of block where uh, we, which can provide some gain at the same time i need to uh, provide a feedback signal but when i give feedback i should ensure that the feedback is positive so what do you mean by feedback is positive the phase shift in the loop or the loop gain phase shift should be equal to zero or 360 that is what we need to ensure right so to have an amplifier uh, so i'm going for inverting amplifier so to have an amplifier what i can do is i can actually uh, connect a feedback resistance say rf and input resistance uh, say let me call it as r1 right this is how i can do and if i ground this this circuit is an amplifier circuit and we know how this amplifier circuit work now if i provide an input signal to this end i know i'll get an output output will be uh, minus of rf by r1 or if i connect if i look from this input to output in this path I know that there will be a phase shift and that phase shift is a, uh, is uh, that is giving a polarity difference which is minus sign which can be understood as a 180 degree phase shift 
or 180 degree is a phase. Now, if I want to convert this amplifier circuit into oscillator, I should ensure the two conditions what we learned. One is, we should see that the loop gain should be greater than or equal to 1. Second is, the phase shift around the loop should be equal to 0. Now, um, what I can do here is, I can actually uh, take a portion from this output and I cannot directly feed it back. What will happen if I directly feed it back? If I directly feed it back, um, there is a 180 degree phase shift between input and output. That phase shift signal I am connecting it back. That means the oscillations or the waveforms cannot uh, combine in a constructive way. Rather it will go in a destructive way and you will not get any output signal. So what I have to ensure here, if there is a phase shift from this point to this point, since there is a phase shift from here to here which is 180, I need to compensate this phase by making this overall phase when, when I connect the signal back to this point to the input point I should make sure that the phase should be equal to zero right so what is the simple uh, the e easiest way to uh, ensure the phase shift of zero is by adding one one way is by adding uh, RC network right because we know that an RC network can provide a phase how much how, what is the maximum phase an RC network can provide what is the maximum phase which can be obtained from an RC network? Yeah, maximum is actually 90, but that 90 degree we will get uh, at infinite frequency, right? So if you write the um, from an RC network, you can get maximum of 90, but that 90 will get very high frequency. So what we'll do, we generally uh, try to get a phase of 60 degree, and we use. In that case, we need minimum 3, right? Because 90 is not possible. If 90 is possible, we can use 2, uh, two RC so that I will get 180. But 90 will get only an infinite frequency. So, we will use 3. So, uh, 3 means 270. But in that, uh, if I set e uh, every RC for 60 degrees, 16 to 3 is 180. So, another 180 is provided, is obtained here. Now, what I will do? Uh, from here, from this point to here, there is a phase shift of 180. Now by adding 3 RC network, I am adding another 180 degree phase shift. So now if I connect it back here, what I am feeding back is or the, the type of uh, the, the loop gain phase shift around the loop is actually 0. It is actually 360 which is exactly equal to 0. Right. So now if I call this as RC and uh, the feedback component is RF and the input component is R1. So. Um, if I look at, if I closely uh, look at this uh, circuit, what I will understand is, I have a uh, circuit here, which is a feedback network, and I have another circuit here, which is your amplifier network, right? So this is our amplifier, and this is our feedback, and. Uh, here I will also um, ensure that the loop, the phase uh, shift around the loop is equal to 360 degree which is sufficient to say that a circuit can generate oscillations. Alright. So now uh, when I say the circuit can generate oscillations, I should also ensure uh, this through some conditions. What conditions I should write, how much should be the loop, what, what should be the loop gain here and how, what is the frequency of oscillation. These are two things what we generally expect uh, from um, an oscillator circuit we should know so if I want to design an oscillator circuit I should know what is the frequency of oscillation at the same time I also wanted to know what is the condition how much should be the gain uh, I, we say that a beta should be greater than 1 now for that how much should be your a in order to have a um, a beta greater than 1 and what should be the value so those details we need now uh, so what we do is we uh, will do a, a detail analysis so I, I hope this is uh, at least the circuit diagram is clear by this time uh, can I get some response in the chat whether this is clear or not? Alright. <clears throat> so what I do is I'll just now take the feedback network and I'll analyze that. So what is the intention of this analysis? For at the end of the analysis, I want to conclude or I want to come up with the conditions. Uh, which can the conditions mean the, the two things. One is what is the frequency of oscillation, and the second thing is what is the uh, gain of the circuit or how much is the gain required right for that uh, what I will do is I will consider the feedback circuit
right uh, so this point what i can see here is this is output is connected so this point is v out point and this is your vf point right <coughs> so uh, i'll take it as it is actually i can uh, draw in the other way but i just want to and i will be analyzing from uh, right to left in this this fashion so this is v out so if i look at feedback network the input to the feedback network is this and what is output of feedback output of feedback is at this point which is vf now uh, i will be doing this analysis in uh, there are different ways we can perform this analysis but the easiest way is to convert this in laplace domain and perform the analysis so i write this as a function of s this also as a function of s um uh, now uh let me i'll do one thing for the analysis sake i'll just draw in normal way so this is your v out capacitor resistor and the second capacitor resistor and the third third capacitor and resistor right and this is vf so as i mentioned i'll be uh, writing in laplace domain s yes. now in laplace domain how will i write uh, capacitance c how can i write the laplace equivalent of a capacitor can i get some response yeah so it is 1 by s c this is r this is 1 by sc this is r 1 by sc and this is r right now from here this is actually connected to the uh, the feedback network if you look at the circuit you will understand uh, yeah from here it is connected back to r1 it is connected back to r1 this will be connected to r1 right now for the analysis uh, yeah so one one condition what we will ensure is so we have a feedback network here and um, in order to pro uh, in order to um, see uh, you have a feedback circuit here right? now, now the feedback circuit should not uh, load the uh, the amplifier part or uh, generally one condition we ensure here is uh, what we do here is um, we will ensure that uh, this resistance the r1 resistance is Uh, much larger than the resistance value of r so you can see that there is an r resistance here and a r1 resistance and uh, one condition we'll ensure here i'll come back to that condition later so what we'll see is we'll make that this r1 is much larger at least 10 times larger than this r so that this feedback circuit will not load much or this will not draw actually much current from this so under that condition what we will do is since the uh, resistance r1 is much larger compared to r we will uh, most of the current the current coming here the most of the current will be actually flowing through this r that is a condition based on which we are going to analyze the circuit i'll i'll explain this so let us look at this so this is how we write now current flowing through this capacitor uh, let me call it as say i1 current is i1 and i'm writing that also as a function of s this i1 is now current flowing through this resistance i call it as i2 fs now the current flowing through i3 uh, sorry uh, this capacitor i call it as i3 and this i write it as i4 and this i write as i5 this as i6 and compared to current i6 the current flowing through r1 is lesser much lesser so i i uh, assume that or i approximate the current flowing through this resistance r1 approximately equal to zero this is just an approximation it is not that uh, the zero current is flowing uh, depending on the resistance value what we choose if the resistance r1 is much larger the current will actually take the least path or the least resistance path that is the base on which i am going to analyze this right so uh, i am just taking uh, this circuit paste it here 
and with this we will uh, continue this analysis right so what i'll do is i'll write expressions so finally what i want is i want to uh, write what is v naught by vf or uh, I want to write the gain of this circuit. What is the gain of this circuit? I want to write what is Vf of s divided by V out of s. That is the uh, expression what I need. But since there are multiple nodes here, multiple nodes here, that is why I have marked all these currents and I will be writing Vf in terms of V out by with the help of multiple equations. Right? Uh, if you look at different um, uh, literatures, no? people will uh, de derive this in different ways the one another way is actually to write in the form of matrix and obtain the relations now what i will do is i'll be uh, writing based on the kcl right so um, let me just uh, mark these nodes as well this voltage i mark it as v1 of s this i will mark at v2 of s this I will mark as V3 of S. So, what is the intention here? I will write Vf of S in terms of V out of S with the help of all these intermediate node voltages. Right. So, let me start uh, with this. Uh, write KCL at V1 of S. So, write KCL at V1 of S at this node. How can I write? The current, the incoming current is I1 of S, which is equal to these two currents. So, I1 of S can be written as the sum of I2 and I3. I1 of S can be written as the sum of these two. Now, how will I write in terms of uh, voltages? V out of S minus V1 of S, which is I1 uh, divided by, it is not res resistance means we'll, we can just put R. Now, what I have is 1 by SC is equal to, what is I2? Current through I2, uh, current I2 is nothing but V1 of S by R plus what is I3? I3 is this current, so I, I should write it in terms of V1 of S minus V2 of S divided by 1 by SC. Right. This is how uh, I can write. Now you look at this, you, uh, here there are three variables, one is V out, one is V1 and one is V2. So what I do is, uh, from this I will write this in terms of V1, you can solve it, you can try um, writing expression in terms of V1, I will give you the expression here. If I write in terms of V1 of S, I can write it as uh, V out of S uh, V out of S plus V2 of S into SRC divided by um, 2SRC plus 1. Please uh, try this and uh, check whether you are getting the solution. Similarly, I can write KCL at V2 of S. Right. So, when I write at V2 of S, the incoming current is I3, outgoing is I4 and I5. So, I can write I3 of S is equal to I4 of S plus I5 of S. Uh, when I write further, it is V1 of S minus V2 divided by 1 by SC, which is I3, is equal to I4 S V2 of S divided by R plus I5 is V2 of S minus V3 of S divided by 1 by SC. Right. So, from here also, what I will do is, uh, here also I will write in terms of V1 of S because I need to eliminate uh, I, I may need to do twice, two times. So, if I, uh, from this, if I write in terms of V1 of S, I can write it as 2 SRC plus 1 into V2 of S divided by SRC minus uh, minus VF of S. It is not, uh, yeah, V3 is nothing but VF, right? Yeah. So, no need to write it as V3. V3 is nothing but Vf here. Right. Now, <clears throat> uh, so as I mentioned before, I am uh, considering that the current flowing through um, R1 is comparatively less because uh, we will choose the resistance value R1 much larger than R. So, if that condition is prevailed, what I can do is, uh, I can write the relation. How will I write the relation here? Yeah. Look at this. Now, what is the relation? 
since if I'm assuming current flowing through this band is zero, then I can directly write what is Vf. How can I write Vf? Vfs can be written as V2 of s. It is a voltage division into R divided by R plus one by Sc. Like this, I can uh, write. Now, solving further. Uh, from this what I can do is I can write what is V2 of s because I want to eliminate the intermediate variables V1 and V2. So V2 of s can be written as, uh, yeah this is R by 1 by SC. So this uh, will come as R divided by R plus 1 by SC, sorry. Mm. 1 plus SRC divided by SRC into uh, V2 of S. Sorry, we are writing V2 of S, right? This implies, so V2 of S is equal to uh, 1 plus SRC by SRC into Vf of S. I hope you are following what I am deriving here. Now, uh, now what I will do is, let me I just put some equation numbers here uh, for the first equation this let me put it as 1 and the second v1 let me put it as 2 right now i have v2 expression right so i'll substitute this v2 expression back to uh, 1 and 2 so that let me do that can i get some response in the chat window are you following what i'm doing here so substitute this is 3. Substitute 3 in 1 and 3 in 2. Substitute uh, this V2 both in uh, 1 and 2 so that uh, I will get two expressions. One is for V1 of S. Uh, I am just dividing the uh, denominator. So V out of S divided by into Uh, SRC divided by 1 plus 2 SRC plus 1 plus SRC into VF of S divided by 1 plus 2 SRC. So what I have done is I substituted the value of V2 back in this expression 1 and then I, uh, I just avoided the intermediate step. You can try this you will get this. Similarly uh, this will give you this and now if I do this I will get one more expression for V1 so the intention is to eliminate V1 and V2 then I will get it as uh, 2SRC plus 1 into uh, SRC plus 1 into VF of S divided by um, SRC into SRC Uh, yeah, this is in terms of Vf of us, right? This is minus Vf. This is how you will get for expression for V1. Now, the whole point is to get an expression of V out in terms of Vf. So now you look at this, no, you, you, you got two expressions, right? So if I'm numbering this as 4 and 5, left hand side of both are equal right so you can equate uh, e expressions 4 and 5 so that the expression you will get an expression with only v out and vf that i will do uh, equate 4 and 5 so that you will get an expression of vf in terms of v out so that i am writing here uh, v vf by v out of s how can i write that uh, by solving uh, and simplifying i'm just giving you the final expressions you can go and check uh, s cube r cube c cube divided by 1 plus 5 src plus 6 s square r square c square plus s cube r cube c cube this is what the expression you will get so how will you get this if you want to get that expression you have to equate these two equate and rearrange equating and rearranging will give you this expression 
Now, what is this Vf of s by V out of s? Look at this uh, from the previous circuit. Vf of s by V out of s. What is that? In the original block diagram, Vf by V out is nothing but the feedback network factor. So, if I can call this as beta, uh, I can call this as the beta, the feedback network factor. Right. This can be called as beta. Now, so what we did is we have analyzed the uh, feedback part. So I'll call this as analysis uh, part A. So let it be there. So we obtain the expression for beta, right? Now, uh, part B of analysis. If I look at the amplifier part, com uh, considering amplifier part. Uh, I am just redrawing the amplifier part here. Uh, amplifier is just two resistors. This is our V out of S. Now what is the input? Input is the feedback signal V of of S. Right. Uh, what is available at the uh, available at this point? Available at this point is directly connected to R1. So instead of that, I have just marked it as V of of S. Now this will help you to write the expression for gain. What is gain here? Gain can be written as V out of S divided by V F of S, which is nothing but uh, if this is R F and this is R1, I can write this as minus R F by R1. Right. So here I have the expression for A, here I have the expression for beta. Now to make this circuit as an oscillator, I need to enforce the condition. What is the condition? Your A beta should be equal to 1. So, for an oscillator, for an oscillator circuit, A into beta should be equal to 1, right. That means uh, minus Rf by R1 into uh, the expression what I have written here, this one S cube, R cube, uh, that thing. So, that should be equal to 1, this into um, S cube r cube c cube divided by 1 plus 5 src plus 6 uh, 6 x square r square c square uh, plus s cube r cube c cube this should be equal to 1 right so so far we expressed in terms of s now um, what we are doing here, why are we writing all this expression? Because um, as an oscillator, we want to know what is the condition for gain, what is the condition, what is the expression for frequency of oscillation. For that, what we do here is, we will substitute uh, the S. S can be replaced with J omega, uh, where the S is complex frequency. And after substituting that, so when I substitute uh, over here, uh, then uh, it will be a complex term, right? You will have J, uh, you will have a real and imaginary term. So, what I will do is, uh, after substituting this, I will equate real and imaginary parts from this. That will give you the, the two conditions what uh, we were uh, telling, we were uh, looking for before, right? So, let me just quickly do that as well. So, if I am substituting S is equal to J omega and if I am replacing, I will get it as minus R of by R1. You can try this. I am just writing here directly. Omega cube minus 6 R square C square omega square plus J5 R C omega plus 1. This is by substituting S is equal to J omega. <coughs> now, I am equating real part. So, when I equate real part, what I get is, uh, yeah, real part is 1 minus 6 r square c square omega square 
is equal to 0 because left hand side uh, there is a minus j term so there are two terms without j so just I equated that uh, that means omega square can be written as 1 by 6 r square c square or f can be written as 1 by 2 pi into root of 6 into rc which is the frequency of oscillation expression so for an rc fissure oscillator the frequency of oscillation with op amp circuit is 1 by 2 pi root 6 into rc similarly if i equate imaginary part if i equate imaginary part mm, the rest of the term which is minus rf by r1 uh, into minus j r cube c cube omega cube equals uh, minus j r cube c cube omega cube plus j into 5 r c omega okay, this is imaginary part if i equate this and if i write this further i can write minus r f by r1 uh, is equal to uh, both terms are same right so if i divide it it is 1 minus 5 divided by j omega rc j omega rc means remaining is r square c square omega square right so when I equated the imaginary part uh, this is the condition now uh, already we have uh, what is r square c square r square r square c square uh, can be written as or r square c square omega square can be written as 1 by 6 from this from this condition i can write r square c square omega square is equal to 1 by 6 and if i substitute that over here what i will get minus uh, look at this minus rf by r1 is equal to 1 minus 5 divided by 1 by 6 or minus rf by r1 is equal to 1 minus 30 which is minus 29 or rf by r1 is equal to 29 this is the condition for gain so for your, your gain should be equal to 29 and the frequency of oscillation expression is 1 by 2 pi root 6 rc so i i just uh, quickly uh, completed the analysis you can just go through the analysis and see whether you are able to get the same expression what i have derived at the end of the derivation the the takeaway point is uh, what is the frequency of oscillation and what is the gain what i need to maintain in order to have uh, sustained oscillations in an rc phase oscillator using opam Alright, so if you have any questions, please ask. We will continue this tomorrow. We will look at the design of RC phase shift oscillator in the next class. Thank you.